All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to show you how to plug your Nintendo Switch Pro controller into your Windows PC and use it to play games on Steam. Pretty straightforward. Um, you just got to make sure that you have the controller in your hand, a way to connect it. It'll connect either with a cable or with Bluetooth to your computer. I recommend a cable because it doesn't suffer from lag as bad. Some computers, especially older ones with older Wi-Fi cards in them that have Bluetooth, will not perform as well. If that's the case, plug it in instead of using Bluetooth. Um, so once you've got that all squared away to however you want to plug it in or connect it to your computer, go to Steam here at the top, click on Settings. It should open a window that looks vaguely like this. And then from there, you just got to scroll down in the sidebar till you find Controller and then give that a click. Now, my screen says no controllers detected because I don't have mine plugged in yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in. And 90% of what you need to do to get this to work on Steam is just plug it in. It really, it's, it's pretty simple. It either functions and detects it properly or it doesn't. There's not really a, an in-between there. So anyway, it took it a moment to detect this and I actually had to press the button on the back of the controller next to where it's plugged into my computer for a couple seconds. Um, it now shows up as the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller plugged in here uh, in the settings menu. And I'll walk you through what these settings mean. So the first one is, do you want your controller to vibrate while you're using it to play? That's kind of how they provide you feedback of what's going on in the game. Next up, do you want Steam haptics? That's when you like move it around and stuff, I would suggest leaving that on that's always a helpful thing to have and then this third option is do you want to use the nintendo button layout this is more to do with on screen rather than magically changing the buttons on your controller it'll try to switch around the a and b button and the x and y button which are similar to how they are on the xbox controller but it'll try to swap those around because they're in a different configuration on nintendo controllers um, it's worth noting at the front of this that if the game you're playing does not have native Pro Controller support, which almost none of them do, it's going to pretend that your controller is an Xbox controller, but it'll try, with this option turned on, to display the buttons in a Nintendo configuration. But it doesn't work with most games, so what you see is often what you get. You just gotta remember which button's which while you're, while you're playing. Next up is test device inputs. When I plug, when I click on this, and I've got this plugged in, it allow me to click all the buttons to show that they actually work and that they actually respond. That's good. My controller is functioning, and if I was having like a problem with stick drift, it would look like even when I'm not touching it that one of my controller's knobs was going on an adventure. But it's not, so I don't have to mess with that. If I did have some stick drift problems, I could go to calibration and I could change this little toggle of a dead zone so that it responded only after I really cranked the knob so that any slight amount of motion from stick drift wasn't getting detected. But I don't have that problem, so I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that alone. But inside of here, it allows you to change like stick drift dead zones for the left and the right joystick. It allows you to calibrate the gyro inside. It'll show you output settings for rumble and haptics. And then it'll even let you change. Well, actually, I don't think you can change the LED on the front. It's only blue around the home button, but it will let you change how bright it is so it doesn't zap through your uh, face into the wall because it's so powerful. Um, so I'll just close that. Next up... Um, Guide button focuses Steam. This just means if you click the right buttons, it'll try to focus on the Steam launcher instead of other stuff going on on your computer. I don't really touch my controllers when I'm not in a game, I'm trying to mess with them. It's usually back to keyboard and mouse, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, obviously, this is a pro controller tutorial, so enabling Steam input for Xbox controllers isn't super important. Same with the PlayStation option pull down menu here, not important, but what you do want is enable Steam input for Switch controllers. 
Um, it, it's optional if you want to enable it for generic controllers. Generic controllers are those wannabe console controllers that like companies like Logitech sell. They look like a console controller, but they're kind of generic. Um, that's what those are. They, they're just like a basic controller. And then you have the option to turn off your controllers when you leave big picture mode. If you do most of your gaming with controllers in big picture mode, that can be really helpful. It just turns them off when you're not using it. You can also change the timeout timer to when your controller goes to sleep. This is more useful when it's not plugged in because obviously if it's plugged in, I'm not concerned about running out of battery. But uh, if you want, you can set it so that after you've been away from your controller for 15 minutes, it goes to sleep or 120 minutes or never. And then down here, if you have an Xbox controller and you want to mess with the extended support driver, you can install that there here at the bottom. It requires a computer restart, but I'm guessing you don't use that because again, pro controller tutorial. Uh, these, these are some layout settings that you can mess with for controlling the desktop with your controller or using guide button cords with your controller. I'm not entirely certain what guide button cords are, but I will cover these in a later tutorial. If you decide that you need that, I'll go through those settings there. So for the most part, there's only two things you need to worry about. Plugging your controller in and messing with these top settings, whether or not you want rumble, haptics, and the Nintendo button layout, forcing it to display that when it can. And also down here, making sure that you have all proper Steam input controls for Switch Pro controllers enabled. And then that's pretty much it. That's you should be able to use your controller now to wander around on Steam playing different games. Again, if it's not got Nintendo Pro Controller support, this will pretend that it's an Xbox controller. And if you want to mess with any of the key bindings or anything else, you'll have to do that inside of the game. But remember, you got to pretend like you're using a game or an Xbox controller because it has to pretend if it, if it didn't have to pretend that would mean that the game has native support for this already. And you wouldn't need these built in drivers from steam to get it to work. I also have for those who are interested, a discount code for NordVPN in the video description below. If you click on that, it gives you a discount on the service and it also gives me a kickback to help support the channel. And if you're not familiar with NordVPN, the whole notion of a VPN is it allows you to log in to a server somewhere else in the world that allows you to function as if you're using the internet from that location. It's great for disguising your internet traffic so people can't snoop on what you are doing. It helps to stay safe and secure for doing things like mobile banking on the go. And it's also nice for things like watching videos that are region locked. If you've got things like Hulu, it's also got a few other handy details that are great for things like your phone. Like if you log into NordVPN on your phone, it's got a built in ad blocker so that you don't get nasty ads spammed throughout all of the different apps that you use. And in general, it's got some great security features that help keep you protected while you're online. So I totally recommend it. And uh, if you're interested, the link's in the video description below. And I'll catch you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And bye, everybody. And have a good one.